How to use Slack for client communication. Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how you can set up a client communication portal on Slack and how you can set up and optimize your workflow using Slack. So let's get into it. First off, you're just going to click on create a new account on Slack and you can log in using your Google account, using your Facebook account, or just by entering your email here on Slack. I have already done that and you can see I have two emails linked to Slack and I have two different workspaces. Now I'm just going to open up this little workspace and now you can also download the Slack application. I do not have that downloaded. I find that using Slack on my browser is uh, sufficient enough for me, but if you are constantly working and you need Slack as your uh, basic communication portal, I would suggest that you do download the Windows application for Slack. It is also available on iOS, not iOS, but on MacBooks. So you can do that as well. Now you can see over here, this is a empty portal. But I am going to click on this over here and I'm going to show you guys how to create a new workspace entirely for your client. So this is my Slack account. I have logged into my marketing portal. But what I'm going to do is from the left side over here, I am going to click on add workspaces and I'm going to click on create a new workspace. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my email. I'm going to continue. Now I am going to verify my email once more. Now this is just the process to create a new workspace. This is not a new account. It's just a separate workspace that you are going to dedicate to your client. Now I'm going to enter my confirmation code and now I'm going to launch it in my browser. And now over here, you can name the company or your team, but if you, this is a entire portal dedicated to your client only, you can name it, uh, for example, if your client is related to your, the project name is perfume. It's a perfume related project. So you could name the company name as a uh, perfume client. But for this, I'm just going to name it perfume. And that is a very odd name, but that is what I just thought of. After that, you are going to add a few portals that you are currently working on, any project, any specific channels that you want to create. So first off, I would suggest that you might might as well skip that for now, but I'm just going to add like a chat communication. And now you can add your client. Now you can do this in two ways. You can either invite them using Gmail or you can get a shareable invite link instead. So with a shareable invite link, they're going to be able to join the workspace without having to open their Gmail account. And if you're doing communication on maybe a third party application and you're not sure about their email yet, and you're just communicating via that application, you can send them this shareable invite link as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add another account and I'm going to add this teammate and now Slack is redirecting me to my workspace. Now once you do that you can see over here you have direct messaging you can add more people to this specific workspace or you can just customize your workspace as well. So for this what you're going to do is first off if you take a look on your left and you click on perfume you're going to have a drop down menu and from here you, you're going to create different channels and uh, customize your client portal so what you're going to do is you're going to click on preferences and then you can enable your notifications after that you can change the sidebar of your uh, workspace so if you want a file browser and a channel browser available you can do that if you want slack connect saved items all of that you can add all of that as well. After that, you have a theme, so you can apply a dark theme or a light theme, or you can add a colored theme that you personally like. So uh, you can do that as well, depending on your project. So maybe if you have a project theme or a, your client is, you know, um, they have like a specific kind of project that has a specific aesthetic, you can match the aesthetic of that as well. After that, you have your messages and media. You can customize the general look of everything over here as well. Then you have accessibility and you can underline links to websites. I would suggest that you do turn that on because that is a very essential feature and that helps your client in differentiating specific links from uh, descriptions or anything else. And now once you close that, these are like your personal kind of 
settings. After that, you have your workspace settings. Now, the workspace settings are going to be very important because if you have many people in your company and you're adding a client, then you're going to have to enable permissions. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into permissions over here. And after that, you can set who uses a specific channel. So let's say workspace owners only can send a message and then you can do a accept guests only. So that just depends on what kind of setup you're doing. If you're adding your client as a guest, then you want to allow guest permissions. If you're adding them as a owner, you want to allow owner permissions. And if you're adding your employees, you want owner only permission. I would suggest that you add them as a workspace owner and then set your permission to workspace owners only. And then by that, you're going to enable your client to directly communicate their messages to your employees without having employee disruption or any kind of uh, unnecessary messages that are conveyed to your client. For a small business, it's very essential that you do keep up a good image. So making sure that uh, information is thoroughly conveyed in a good manner is pretty essential. You can also now, after that, you have your invitation. So by default, any member can invite new people to your workspace. You're going to require admin approval and this channel can, so all admins can just um, approve requests and that just depends on who you set as an administrator. Then you also have your channel management. So who can edit or add the general settings of your Slack chat, you're gonna make that workspace owners only as well. So you're gonna change all of this to workspace owners only. Then for all of these that are any uh, high end features, you can always make them workspace owners only and make sure that you choose to make this allow editing of any messages or a deletion to be up to never. And then you can make it owners and uh, admins only because you don't want anyone else uh, to delete messages between your client and you. Now, after that, in your settings, you're going to scroll down and you're going to see apps and custom integrations and you're going to manage permissions for apps and integrations as well, because having applications and integrations added into your Slack is Slack chats are very important because if you have a client, then you're going to probably be transferring data and information and you need to require app approval. So if any member can install and any um, the uninstall any application, this might mess up some work. So you're going to turn this on and then you're going to allow workspace owners only. And then that's around it. You don't need to change any other functionalities. After that, you're going to go back into your uh, Slack application with the new settings. And then you are going to start adding some channels. So first off, you're going to have to add a progress channel because that's one of the most essential things that a client is going to need. Uh, let's say perfume or sales progress. So sales progress, and you're gonna create it. And I'm gonna skip this for now. After that, you're gonna create a new channel for maybe marketing strategies. Yeah, this marketing is fine like this. Now, after that, you can also make these private. So if the marketing team and the sales team is very different, they don't have any overlapping people, you can make these channels private so it's not accessible to different members of your team who don't really need the access. And what this will do is it's going to help your client realize who is working on what. And if there is any bottleneck effect in your work, they're going to be able to deduct who is um, responsible for the bottleneck. Now, after that, you're going to also add a channel for your samples, any kind of samples that you're doing. Maybe it's design samples, ad samples anything like that. We're going to make this like so. And then you are going to just, if you take your cursor over your channel, so this is a samples channel, I'm going to do a right click. And then you're going to open channel details. You're going to click on integrations and you're going to add the app. So if it is a app, for example, if you're doing sample sharing, then you're going to click on Google Drive and you're probably going to install Google Drive into your Slack integration because if you're sharing a lot of data and you're sharing a lot of files you can't really add that many attachments that are that heavy so you're just going to integrate google drive into your slack application and if you do want you can integrate your entire workspace software 
to your Slack and then have a dashboard in your workspace as well for your client. But that is something that is reserved for larger and more committed clients. And you don't want to do something that requires so much time for something that uh, for a project that might be temporary or that's going to end in a few months. Now, this is generally how you set up a client portfolio for your um, projects. Generally speaking, this is everything you can do on the free version of Slack. Slack does have a pro and a business version. The pro version starts at around 6.67 USD. You get unlimited messages archive, you get unlimited apps, you get group video calls with screen sharing, you get work securely with organization using Slack Connect. So I just, I'm just gonna show you. This is Slack Connect and you can send a direct message to anyone that is even not on Slack from another business. And then you can even create a channel in which you add a, another business entirely. So if you're a small business selling perfumes and you're maybe marketing, maybe you're hiring someone to do your marketing from New York, you can easily create a channel where your companies can work together. Now, after that, uh, you have a lightweight voice only conversation with Slack huddles that's going to allow you some um, audio communication without having heavy files. After that, you have your business plus version, which allows you a uh, uptime SLA of 99%. You also get a single sign on. You get data exports for all your messages and all your messages are archived and saved permanently. So that is generally the overall functionality of slack i hope you guys found this video helpful and you're now able to set up your own client on slack and get your team set up here as well and i will catch you guys in the next video